Big thanks to Bluefin for sending this one out. Check them out and links to buy in the description. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there collectors, it is Steven here and welcome to a Gundam review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Gundam Universe Wave 4, which is going to feature Tall Geese and the God Gundam. Now to my understanding, this is going to be the Tall Geese representation from Gundam Wing, or Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, you know, the full title there. Now Wave 4 is going to consist of two awesome units, which are going to be 25 bucks a piece. Yeah. Yeah, 25 bucks. They're going to be a little bit bigger than your Robot Spirits releases, which this line is not intending to be. We have something entirely different here. And yeah, you can pick them up in links in the description, but you can readily find Gundam Universe figures at Walmart and Target. I've seen them there myself. Check out the collectible section. All right, well, that's enough of an introduction. We've got two nice looking figures here. Let's take a look to see whether or not these are worth adding into your collection. Let's go ahead and take a look at both Tall Geese and the God Gundam, which put a pin in it. North America, it's known as the Burning Gundam. Japan, God Gundam. I'm going to be using them interchangeably just because that's how I do things. We're going to be taking a look at both of these at the exact same time because, uh, well, realistically speaking, when it comes to quality, their accessories, articulation, pretty much everything overall, they're going to be relatively the same. Obviously, they're going to be two entirely different characters, but you're going to be getting the same sort of beats with both of them. Now, when it comes to sculpt and paint, generally speaking, for 25 bucks, you're not going to get something that's super duper detailed in terms of panel lining and 100% super sharp pointed, accurate sculpt. But here, what we have are two very nice looking figures. The paint applications, when you take a look at them super up close and personal with a macro lens, the paint isn't masked perfectly, and when it comes to the metallic paint, no company can do it with super amazing precision, but realistically speaking, when you have it up on the shelf or you're just fiddling around with it, it's going to be just fine. So, paint application, not really all that bad in terms of quality. It's actually quite good. Where it is a little bit of, I guess you may say, a downer is in terms of what is or is not painted. Again, as we sort of said at the top, you may notice things like panel lining are missing, or you may notice that this part should have a black paint application here, or maybe there should be some gold here. Maybe this thing should be painted different, or that. That is not exactly what this is meant to be here. We're supposed to be getting more affordable figures that look like the characters, and hey, we get some pretty good paint apps, which what we have here, again, are good. And the sculpts, they are actually pretty spot on to the character models. Now, with the price point, if you do want to customize these, go on ahead. Gundam markers are relatively cheap. So if you want to do that, by all means, I would actually encourage that. And if you do have any customs, please let me see them. I'm very interested to see how some of these characters really do pop once you do have some customization applied to them. Now, what we do have in front of us, again, it's very good, especially when you factor in $25. That's going to be the price point that I'm going to hammer home throughout this review. Time to talk about articulation here and we'll go ahead and start with tall geese and I do have to say it's pretty good. Let's take a look. So the head is going to plug into the neck on a ball joint system here so this way we can move it around. Now as we'll see in the burning Gundam there is a little peg here and does that move at all on tall geese? No it unfortunately does not but hey that's okay. Now the shoulders are going to plug in on ball joints. This way we can spin the arm around and get it to rock forward and back a little bit along with a hinge. So this way we can raise and lower the arms like that. Now you may notice that the shoulder armor here does sort of block the articulation, but as you can see there, it is also on a joint as well. And it is going to be effectively a hinge joint so that way they can move up and down just like that to accommodate for the shoulder armor. Nice. We are going to have a bicep swivel both arms and as you can see we are going to have even though it may be a double what is effectively a single elbow hinge just because of the way this mobile suit is designed the wrists are going to be ball joints and they are just going to be straightforward ball joints uh, no fancy system like a swivel hinge combo or anything like that here but that's okay because hey it's effective and it works now on the shoulders you are going to see these little I guess do hickeys and when we talk about accessories, we'll see what those are used for. These are going to be on hinges. 
talking about the main body here, it does seem like we do have a ball joint system here, which is good because we can rock and twist and turn. That is gonna be about the range of movement. It feels like if I go any farther than that, it's gonna snap and break. So, hey, that's pretty good. Now for the waist, we do have a few bits of armor here that are gonna be on ball joints or hinges. So your mileage may vary for what will move for you. As you can see here, we do have a few pieces of armor that are on different joints and these can move so this way the legs move better on their own joint systems. Now, the hips are going to be on ball joints and they're sort of in a figure arts drop down style, but permanently in the drop down style range. I can't get them to push back up, so something to keep in mind there. Now, it kind of looks like the hip area plugs into the thigh on a swivel, but I can't get a dedicated thigh swivel movement out of there. It kind of seems like I'm stressing the plastic. So if it can move, unfortunately on tall geese, it is stuck on this particular unit. Now for the knees, we do have double hinges, as you can see here, and they move back about that far. This piece here does not move on tall geese. Taking a look at the ankles, what do we have? Well, we got nice ball joint movement here for ankle rockers, which is very, very good. Very impressed with the movement here. Little squeaky on this one, but hey, it works very, very well. Now, taking a look at the back here, we do have some thrusters, and what do we have movement-wise? Well, these are actually going to kind of be accessories because this base part here is plugged into tall geese right out of the box, but back here, the actual main unit, those need to get plugged in. Now, these do move on a swivel, so they can spin like this, so we get some good movement, and then we can twist and turn them and spin them around all the way. Both of them do this, and then we do have two little extra wings here and those are gonna be on hinges. So very good movement if you're looking to have an articulated tall geese figure at a good price. Now, I made mention of accessories and we can pretty much bang out the accessories right here as well. We are going to get a shield, pretty cool, which is going to have two little secrets here. You're gonna notice there are handles here for beam sabers. And in the instructions, it shows that you can remove these. So this way you can use beam savers and you can see there's actual holes in there. Unfortunately, you're gonna need uh, a different Gundam Universe figure, uh, RX-78-2. I always flip flop on saying the dashes. Uh, in order to use the beam savers. So I do not have that one, so I cannot unfortunately show you tall geese using the beam savers, but it's something to keep in mind. Now the shield plugs in on the left shoulder. Just put a little bit of pressure. Baba Booey, you're good to go. Head popped off. First time that that's ever happened to me. Okay. Now, oh, so it does look like this is, in fact, on a hinge. But it's very tight. Okay, interesting. There we go. Quick and easy fix. So, hey, happy little accidents. That's always a good thing. Now, we are going to get the blaster. So, I started blasting. And the handle here is actually going to be on a hinge. So, we can move it forward and back. Pretty neat little thing. Uh, not too much utility, I would suppose, but hey, it is what it is. Now, this does plug in on the shoulder, on a ball joint. You are gonna have to put a little bit more pressure. There you go, you're gonna hear a click. It's rather tight, and it can move. There you go. Now, let's say you don't want that in particular. You can pop it off. Again, it's tight, you gotta be a little forceful with it. Swap out the right hand part and pop in a different right hand part, which allows you to display tall geese holding the gun. And there you go. Tall geese has to sort of hold it at an angle, but it does work. And Last but most certainly not least, I already have it attached, we get a little attachment part here, which is actually very good at staying attached, as I have tried a few different poses. A little attachment piece, so this way you can use Tamashi support arms without the need for a claw, very similar to some Robot Spirit releases. So if you look at the bottom here, there's going to be a few different segments. It seems like the last piece, or the last part, is going to have a little bit of a divot on the sides, so you can just pop that right in, and you are good to go. Let's just go ahead and show for a quick example here. 
You just plug it in. Stand is a little bit loose, but it is what it is. Tall geese is a little heavy. But hey, there you go. So for articulation and accessories, I think tall geese is pretty good. Could just use some splayed hands and then also something of note as well. There is a beam effect that comes out of the gun, but that also comes with the same Gundam that apparently comes with the beam saber effects. So if you're looking to maximize tall geese, you will have to pick up another Gundam. All right, let's talk about Burning Gundam's articulation, and we actually get quite a few points of articulation here. I did pop the shoulder pad off, so this way you'll be able to see how the shoulder system moves. And then there's also another point here that I do want to sort of talk about in advance. We do have a few points of articulation throughout the figure, most specifically around the waist area, where we are going to have some stuff that moves, and some of it does like to pop off if it exceeds its range of movement. My general philosophy is that I I would prefer stuff to pop off instead of break, especially when stuff's fragile, but that's just me. So the head plugs into the neck on a ball joint so we can twist and turn it and spin it around, which is very good. Pretty basic there. It can look up about that far, down about that far. And then that ball joint is going to plug into the body, uh, the shoulder area there on a little, I guess you might call it a block. And that's going to raise and lower on a hinge, which is pretty good, like you saw before <laughs> at the end with tall geese. So as you can see there, there is a ball joint that's going to be there for the shoulder pads, which allows you to raise and lower them and twist them a little bit from side to side, rock them around. And that is going to be so this way the actual shoulder hinge there has a good range of movement. Now, let's see if I can get this arm to raise up. Yep. So you can see the God Gun can T-pose and you can see, comparatively speaking, without yeah, it doesn't really change the range of movement too much. Yeah, we'll talk about that pad in a second there. So, overall, the shoulder pads do help to move out of the way with that extra point of articulation. Now, let's not get him to look too naked and pop this back on with ease. There we go. Now, humanoid figure, what do we have? We have a bicep swivel. Of course, very good. Double hinge elbows, worked very good. We are going to have ball jointed wrists, as you saw before. With tall geese, it's going to be the same here. Now, because we do have these forearm guards, these gauntlets, these are going to block that wrist articulation just a little bit, just because, as you can see, the hand does collide with them. Now, interestingly enough, these actually do move around because of the uh, little slot slit there, I don't know, on the forearm. And we do have little claws here that raise and lower on hinges. Now, you can see there are two different holes or little slots there on the guards. Now, what we can do is we can have them sort of pulled back a little bit or we can push them forward for the erupting burning finger or whatever else you want to display your Gundam doing. And we'll take a look at the accessories in just a minute. Now, that's going to be it for the arm articulation. What about the waist? Well, we are going to have a ball joint, just one. That's about the range of movement there. Do note, we do have some sculpt down here. I'm going to be bumping into stuff, so do be mindful of paint scratches. So as I kind of showed you earlier, we do have a few different points of articulation down here for the waistcoat. I guess I'll just call it in general. Nothing here on the back, but for the sides here where the beam sabers would be, those are going to be on swivels where they plug in and then hinges so this way they can raise and lower. Uh, let me move the arm out of the way here so you can see. And these do like to pop out, but again, they're going to pop out once you move the legs to a certain degree and you force them out. See? So, as long as you're mindful of that and you don't mind popping them back in, it's not that big of a deal. So, once you sort of fiddle with it a bit and you mind the butt plates, I guess, here's about how far forward and how far back reasonably the God Gun can move his legs, and then to the sides, about that far. Now, are we going to have dedicated thigh swivels? Well, we do have ball-jointed hips, so we kind of get the thigh swivel there. We do get double knee hinges. Very good. I'll go ahead and pop that back on real quick. And then we are not done with articulation just quite yet. 
the ankle guards move a little bit. It seems like they're on ball joints. And then ball jointed ankles, which is very good. Very good to see. For the backpack, that's just going to plug in. It is not attached in the box, so something to keep in mind. Thrusters don't move, but we do have the wings, which can move up like that. There and there. So we do have some good movement out of those. Very, very good. Now, accessories. So we kind of talked about the forearm gauntlets, which are pretty good. We do have the backpack, which is not attached in the box. Well, what do we have? Well, otherwise, we do have the same sort of support stand that plugs in down here. So this way you can use Tamashi's support arms without having to use a claw. Good. Now, let's go ahead and set this up for the iconic pose. So we do have an optional chest part, which all we do is we just got to wiggle this a little bit and then it'll pop off. No problem. Step one, we do have an alternate piece here that opens up. We have to slide that in. And there we go. Step two, we do have this alternate core part, as I like to call it. And once we line it up, because it is unique, and this is the steps that the instruction booklet have. And interestingly enough, if you try to do it in reverse order, this has a difficult time going on. So, okay, boom, we have the exposed chest, pop off the right hand, you know where this is going, and then you can pop on for a uh, erupting burning finger, I think it's called. Yeah, there you go. And then you just move this accordingly, and bada bing, bada boom, God Gundam is good to go. Nice metallic red paint application for that hand. It looks awesome. So for articulation for the God Gundam, yeah, you can get this guy into a whole bunch of neat poses. Domo Kashu's the pilot, so yeah, he's a guy. He's the one who's one-to-one -one moving this one. It's kind of like a Jaeger, so I wonder where they got the idea for the drift from. But anyway, yeah, God Gundam moves pretty well. And for accessories, it'd be cool if we do have the option to use a beam saber or we had beam saber hands. But still, at the end of the day, this one works just fine enough for the price point. And to round everything out, here's a size comparison with some other figures you just might have. These are definitely going to be bigger than your average robot spirits figures, about six inches even. Or maybe a little bit more, depending on where you measure. It's Bandai. Gundam, <laughs> Tamashii Nations to be more specific. We have to talk about the robot spirits if we're talking about Gundam, end of discussion. So this is Gundam Universe. This is meant to be sort of the entry point for folks who are looking to get into Tamashii Nations. They like robots. They know of a Gundam that they love. They grew up watching it on Toonami. Can you guess which one I fell in love with? I think you can. Uh, now, uh, there may be some folks who are thinking, yeah, I want to get into Gundam Universe because, hey, God Gundam, cheap, 25 bucks, let me go ahead and get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're kind of spoiling the end of the video here with what I'm going to say, but that's okay. Now, something to really keep in mind here, this is meant to be more so an entry point into Tamashii Nations and the world of action figures, most specifically for Gundam. If you're thinking you're going to get a cheaper or more affordable robot spirits, you're kind of in the right ballpark. Now, admittedly, for this comparison, the robot spirits gone gun the robot spirits god gundam is an absolute monster of a figure. So maybe this comparison is really showing the extreme end of things. But if you're thinking that this is going to be a $25 robot spirits, not exactly. This is going to be a really good figure for $25, but when you take a look at something that you're going to get for the robot spirits here, I mean, you can just see right away that the elbow hinge works a little bit better there. You can see that we do have the accessories which are a bit more show accurate. You can see we do have more paint applications, we can see better engineering for some of those parts that may pop off. And uh, when I talk about engineering, again, the Robot Spirits God and Gundam is an absolute monster for articulation. We do have ball jointed hips, which feature uh, what, what's going to be there, uh, multiple points of articulation in the hips, along with a thigh swivel. Okay, we are going to have a knee swivel along with two hinges for the knee there. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're thinking you're going to be able to do this with this, you're not going to be able to do that. But then again, this is $60 at MSRP. This is going to be $25. All things considered, though, this is really good for what it's trying to do. However, don't think you're going to get this for this. Go in with your expectations for this. 
um, now that I've kind of said what I thought about this line, let's go to the outro. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. For 25 bucks, both Tall Geese and the God Gundam are absolutely worth the purchase. If you've been thinking about getting these, but you're unsure of the quality, the only thing that I would say that both of these would need would definitely be the effect parts and some splayed hands, because if it's a humanoid character, they absolutely need to have splayed hands. That's just what I think all characters need from the get-go. Fists, splayed hands, and then if they need hands to hold their accessories. Must-haves. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to get your full 25 bucks worth and more. Now, with that being said, there are some other companies who are putting out figures at 20 bucks and 30 bucks that are on the shelf alongside these because you can get them at Target. You can get them at Walmart. Um, I, I don't know what they're doing for the price point here. But Bandai is really giving us our money's worth. So if you're thinking about it, yeah, go ahead and you have nothing to worry about. You're going to spend your $25 really well. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me. I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up which will give you a few clickable links like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my patreon or some short urls like to my social media or to my teespring store there's also a video i hand selected for you so if you want to watch another str video i hand selected some good content for you to watch so definitely check out that video thank you again so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video